Yes, okay, so I'm uh, Marc Chenoir, I'm a senior researcher at INRIA uh, since 2001, but before that I spent 20 years in CNRS uh, as a researcher. Uh, so CNRS and INRIA are the two main public research institutes in computer science. CNRS is much wider than that, but INRIA is uh, restricted to more computer science and applied math. Uh, so I started at CNRS in applied math precisely and then move to INRIA in computer science. So INRIA has uh, some mission with our basic research, uh, transfer to industry and uh, education of uh, PhD, HPG level. Well, the definition, there are no, no real definition of artificial intelligence, to my taste. But the one I prefer is the one that was given in the 80s, so long ago, by uh, Philip Kahn, who was CEO of uh, Borland, the company that invented the Turbo Pascal. Uh, and he said, and I really like that, that artificial intelligence is just uh, having the computers do something they couldn't do before. And I like it because once you've done it, it's not artificial intelligence anymore, of course. It's just one way of programming, one elegant way or smart way of programming. Uh, well, there's the, most, the biggest surprise were due to the fact that uh, evolution is opportunistic. Uh, and I wrote one paper, say, like the title is uh, um, evolutionary algorithm as fitness function debugger, where we were working on some um, underground identification uh, by, uh, from seis seismic uh, uh, experiments. And we found solutions that had the perfect fitness, better than uh, anything else, but that were totally stupid from a geological point of view. I mean, any, any seven years old engineer would have <laughs> said, no, no, that's not possible. But still, it was the best fitness because our hypotheses were a bit uh, uh, not hard enough. Uh, our geological hypotheses were non-existent. Uh, okay, so I've always been working, let's say, at the, uh, at the border between uh, evolutionary algorithms and, and machine learning. And uh, the group I've created uh, in Tao with uh, Michel Sebag is, is called Processi Tao, which is uh, in French, Thème Apprentissage Optimization, which is machine learning and optimization. Uh, so I think this is where there's a, a lot to be done. I've worked in many, many uh, areas and uh, application areas like uh, well, cyber security, air traffic control, uh, optimum design in, in, in mechanics uh, and more. Uh, but more recently, uh, focusing on, on machine learning uh, ideas. Uh, and of course, with the advent of, uh, of uh, deep learning and the hype on artificial intelligence, mainly focused on uh, machine learning. I think that's where there's uh, something to be done and there's some niche, no, not a niche, there is some uh, big uh, area to explore for evolutionary computation too. And there could be, there could be some, some, what I call a summer for evolutionary algorithms, because evolutionary algorithms are not so well considered in computer science world and in machine learning community uh, at large. But recent results, uh, well, from uh, Risto Mikulainen, Ken Stanley, and also from others that are not from our community, and that's where it becomes interesting, like the OpenAI uh, result, uh, seems to demonstrate that, yes, there is some, some cases where evolution, evolution can really uh, bring something new and, um, and, and obtain state-of-the-art results and, and be state-of-the-art results. Okay, yes, uh, yeah, I, I cited a few. So, well, cybersecurity is one of the most recent work I've been doing using evolutionary algorithms uh, with uh, Louis Marty. Uh, uh, and uh, the partner was Thales, and we worked on some uh, anomaly detection algorithms. And, uh, well, the result is actually uh, used, though, of course, it's uh, uh, highly covered by <laughs> security, and I cannot say, I cannot give many details. That 
Most of them I don't know, by the way, that I'm not at all a cybersecurity expert. But it's always nice to see that your results are actually implemented and used, even if you don't know exactly where. Uh, so, um, uh, yes, the idea was to detect anomaly, and we surprisingly, and this is another surprise maybe, uh, we used uh, the same idea of a representation that was used in optimum design. I dis I cited uh, before, because to me that this is where evolutionary, evolutionary algorithm and evolution, uh, evolutionary computation uh, has a role to play. It's because it can handle any representation, almost any representation, if you're able to provide variation operators, crossover mutation or anything else, that are meaningful and semantically meaningful for the problem at hand. And this is where they really can make a huge, huge progress. Uh, interestingly, too, uh, probably once you've uh, opened the road with evolution, someone else or yourself might find another method to do the same thing, probably uh, less uh, costly in the computation time, but evolution computation is really there to open the road of new, new paths to explore. Evolution can help deep learning because it can handle and search weird search spaces with uh, any type of representation. And we've already had some examples. So GP is one. It's not so weird because it, it's a perfectly defined trees, but you can add to the search for the structure of uh, deep learning and add uh, the search for parameters of the opti optimizer, uh, the choice of the optimizer before its parameter. So this is something, some search space that almost only EA can explore. Uh, and again, as I said, once you explore, you can imagine you find really the best uh, architecture and the best parameters, but then you should, of course, use, uh, let's say, gradient-based, uh, stochastic gradient descent uh, to obtain the best result, uh, because in most cases, this will be the most powerful result for some specific learning. So G uh, EAs uh, and LGP is there to explore the structure, but not to give the accurate result in the end. Uh, okay, well, one, one thing that uh, EC can, where EC can help, and that's probably a very big thing to, to, to do now, is to do uh, personalized uh, items, personalized uh, software, personalized apparatus. Uh, and uh, the trick is you have a, a, a lot of data now everywhere, but it's very noisy and very different from one person to the, the other. And Another strength of uh, EC is that it can cope with uh, noisy uh, signals. EC can, uh, at the same time, uh, by having some, sort of maybe some uh, fitness shaping mechanism or thing like that, uh, find first a, a basic software that would work more well, but not very well for everybody, and then for each person uh, in, in turn, find an optimum that's really personalized and that can really help this individual and nobody else. So that's probably something that well, you can hope to make big progress in the future now. AC is great, AC can make uh, reach great achievements, but there are many methods out there uh, from applied math to, to pure computer science uh, or personal research or, and so forth. And we should work together with this method and, and pick the best of uh, each world and, and not pretend that EC will solve everything. And this is, uh, to me, the, the key to the success of well, EC in its role and uh, computer science at large and AI at large, I would say.